Oh boy, okay. All right, I hey, got the door open. Hello everyone and welcome back to the homestead. I would hold up oh, what I've got in my arm here. There you go, but it's real heavy. have here is a package from a company called JU Fabworks. I got reached out to by the owner of the company, Jeff Ulig, uh, who I'd imagine JU, JU Fabworks. And they build something called the Workmaster Plate. They started by building these for John Deere and they've recently expanded into the world of Kubota. And he reached out to me and he said, hey, I have this product. Uh, I see what you do with your tractor on your farm on YouTube. And I'm wondering if you'd be interested in trying it out, giving it a shot. I'm not just gonna take free stuff to, to review on the channel. We get tons of emails trying to trying to get us to, to review stuff on the channel, but this was something that in talking to Jeff, uh, he mentioned it was made in America. Um, it uses components that are also made in America and then it's fabbed up right in his shop. After talking with Jeff a little bit back and forth, I said, you know what, send me one. I'll give it a shot, I'll check it out, I'll see what it's all about and um, I'll give it an honest review on the channel. He was all about it. He said, I don't want you to sugarcoat anything. If you don't like it, if, it, if it's junk, um, feel free. He, he believed in his product and I really like that. So I've got the box here. This actually came like a week and a half ago with Homesteaders of America. Uh, I'll link that video up in the corner. With my trip down to Virginia for Homesteaders of America, I didn't have a chance. I didn't want to put it on or do the unboxing beforehand and then have to come back to it. So I, I'm back here, I'm home from work. It's a little bit later in the day than I would have liked, um, but I've got tomorrow as well that I can do some work with the actual tractor uh, if I can get this thing mounted up today. So goal for today is unboxing and mount it, and then tomorrow we will do some work with the tractor and actually see how it works. Let's get in here. Wow. That is sharp. The powder coat's beautiful. Check it out. Welds look really good. It's got a sticker there. Cool logo, etched in. Grab hooks are made in USA, that's pretty cool. So we've got grab hooks, rings, and a two inch receiver. I'm guessing this is gonna be hardware. Backing plates it looks like. I haven't read the, the directions yet. I'm um, guessing these are backing plates though for inside the bucket and hardened hardware. Everything looks awesome. Um, the welds are great. The grab hooks are, are solid. The powder coat looks good. I mean, if it was like, if it was a set of wheels, I might say it's a little thin in places, but um, like on the bottom there, but it's a tractor part. And um, that's gonna be going up against the bucket anyway. So not too worried about it. I'm gonna go off camera, I'm gonna look at the directions, I'm gonna see what we need to install this, and then we're gonna install it. So yeah, give me just a second. All right, we're back. Uh, I've read the instructions right here. They are actually pretty good. Uh, I think I know without looking, without having the tractor in front of me and re just reading through the directions, I'm pretty sure what I, I know what I need to do. Um, I'm gonna go get the tractor. I'm gonna pull the tractor out. I'm gonna park it right here so we have better light versus it over in the woods kind of where it is right now. And then I'm gonna go grab, it tells you everything you need in the directions. Uh, you're gonna need a drill, you're gonna need some clamps. Um, 
half inch bit, seven sixteenths bit. So I'm gonna get the tractor out and we're gonna get to putting this thing on. And I'm gonna time it and I'm gonna see how long this takes me to, to put on so you guys know once I get moving just how long it takes. All right, so slight change of plans. Uh, as I was going through and I was looking for my drill bits, um, or I found my drill bits, but I realized one, I thought I had a half inch, who knows where that is. And I thought I had a 7 16 Turns out I, I've never owned a 7 16 drill bit. I found six 3 8 drill bits, which who knows why. Uh, but I do have this trusty Unibit, um, which will do everything I need it to. And our steel on this is not super, super thick. If I had to drill through this, you know, on, on the Workmaster plate, there's no way this would drill through there. Um, and get me a good clean hole. But on this, on the Kubota bucket, it's perfectly acceptable. It's not too thick for this thing. So I will clamp the Workmaster plate on. I'll mark my holes. I will drill pilot holes, which I didn't want to do, but I will. And uh, we'll just go that route. So I am going to start the stopwatch now. The directions tell me it should be 12 and a half inches from either side to the inside edge of this or to the outside edge of the Workmaster plate. So I'm gonna start by marking that and then seeing where that gets me. That looks pretty good. It's lined up with the ram. The center ram on the loader here, let me show you. That's where we're at there. As we say in the States, that's good enough for government work. That's where I'm gonna clamp it and we'll drill our holes. So your first step once it's clamped down is you're gonna drill your three holes in the front. Um, the two on the ends are perfect. The one in the middle was just a little bit off, which is funny because that's the first one I drilled. But I think it's gonna be good enough. I, again, this is not a precision instrument. Um, we'll align it with the two on the outside and if I have to um, oversize the hole in the middle just a hair, that's fine. We've got one, two, three, four other bolts holding it on there. So I think we'll be good. All right, we're going to 7 16 I've got my drill bit marked so I can see. And we're just gonna haul waller these out. Got my holes drilled now. I'm pretty sure I got the middle one close enough. I don't think I'll have to drill it bigger than 7 16 uh, It should go in. But um, I'm gonna put the plate back on, I'm gonna clamp it back down, and we are going to get these first three bolts in. All right, 5 8 5 8 uh, I know I'm not giving you guys the full play-by-play -play on this, but I'm assuming if you're going to attempt something like this, uh, you at least have like a basic working knowledge of tools and sizes and things like that. So. With these three bolts and the bends in the bucket and as thick as this steel plate is, I bet that that would work as it is, but you've still got these reinforcement brackets that are gonna go in the back here. Okay, um, slight snag that we ran into. So the direction spec that you tighten down the front to about 60 foot pounds, and then you put these rear brackets in place. The problem I ran into, you're not gonna be able to see both, so I'll just do my hand, then I'll get the roll and cut it in. The problem I ran into is that on the brackets, either the holes that are on the top of these brackets, which are actually elongated, um, they weren't long enough or they were drilled in the wrong place, they were a little bit off. Or the bend, the 45 degree bend at the bottom here that braces up against the bucket uh, should have been bent just a hair closer, like the overall top to bottom width is a little bit off. 
or there's always the possibility that my bucket is out of spec as well because it's fab work and we all know how fab work can go. You're working with metal, it's not easy. So I'm not placing the blame on anyone in particular. Um, I do have a call in to Jeff over at JU Fabworks. I loosened up the three bolts on the front here. And once I did, there was just enough play in it that I could get everything to line up the way it should. And I'm inclined to think that if I drilled the lower holes in the back and put the bolts through there, the half inch bolts, and then tightened everything up against the bucket and then tightened up the bracket to the workmaster plate itself, everything should fall in line. And the only issue that might arise is this tiny little gap right here. It wouldn't sit flush against the top of the bucket. Um, quarter inch plate steel, grade eight hardware. Um, I'm not inclined to think that it would, it would break, anything would break or bend because because that's just the way metal works. Like it's not, it's a BX. It's not like we're lifting thousands of pounds with this. So I have an email in, like I said, and when I get a response, um, I will pick back up on the video. To get to this point though, we are at 36 minutes and 10 seconds. So uh, not too bad, we're still under an hour. And actually I think even with this little snafu, I stopped it when I figured out something was wrong. Um, I think even with that, I'll be able to figure out and keep this under an hour for the total install, which is pretty good. Hello, and welcome back. So it is the next day from where I left off on the video last night, um, where I had gotten basically everything lined up, but I wasn't sure if there was an issue with the support brackets on the back, because uh, things weren't lining up with the front tightened down. I did get them lined up correctly, with the front loosened up and after talking with jeff last night speaking of customer service out of this world uh, i shot jeff an email last night at like 5 30 and i had a text back we were texting pictures back and forth and uh, we got it figured out so the way it looks is just because of various manufacturing um you know tolerances and things like that that can stack up uh or potentially the fact that my bucket was out of spec or because i've used it now for almost four years I bent something on the bucket, which is totally possible. Um, there could be just a little bit off on everything. What I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the front loose. I am going to find where the holes need to be drilled for these and drill those holes. Uh, put the bolts through, tighten the bolts on the back, tighten the bolts on the front while clamping it, and then tighten these top bolts here. And hopefully that gives me... I mean, it, it, it's gonna, it is gonna give everything. It's gonna tighten everything up and everything's gonna be solid. So that's how we're gonna do it. Um, and that's how we're gonna roll. So let's do that. I will restart the stopwatch. So the plan, I'm gonna tighten these lower half inches first. Uh, then I'm gonna clamp this again so it's tight against the top. I'm gonna do the front three, and then we'll do these top ones holding everything together. That should work. First thing I'm going to try is I'm going to put a one and seven eighths ball in here um, and we're going to try the trailer moving capability of this thing because that's actually, that's what I was most excited about. I'm going to move a trailer.
I have an old, uh, really old, Harbor Freight utility trailer. I think it was like a 1,200 pound max capacity, although I wouldn't trust this thing with that. But um, but it's not really roadworthy anymore. It's got a lot of rust on it. It lost a fender at one point. Uh, really, it's not. I used to use it to move motorcycles around. Like if I bought a motorcycle, I would hook it up behind my car and use it to get a motorcycle home that way. But um, but it's in rough shape. It's not something I'd really want to use for that anymore. So in the future, this is going to become a chicken coop for down on the new pasture area. I don't really want to have to drive my truck out into the pasture every time I want to move this. So the Workmaster plate with the trailer ball on the front of it makes for a really quick and easy way for me to, to get this thing moved if I have to. Uh, so that's what I'm going to try. I'm going to bring the tractor around, I'm going to hook this up, and we're going to push this thing around the front yard and see how she goes. Coupler definitely needs a little bit of lube. But that thing's been sitting for like three, maybe four years. I also should note that the tongue on this, I know is short. Um, so the trailer geometry is gonna be a little bit wonky, but it should work just fine for, for playing around in the yard. That is gonna work out perfect for moving the chicken coop once we get that built. So if you've never moved a trailer using the front of your bucket, um, or like a front hitch on a car, they make those too. I highly recommend it. You wouldn't wanna tow any long distances with it because you're gonna be looking over your shoulder. But if you just need to move something quickly, like we back the boat into the garage, or I'm moving a chicken coop out on pasture, just for moving that trailer around the yard a little bit and putting it where I want it, uh, this thing is worth its weight in gold already. I am super psyched on it. Obviously with a BX uh, and the loader capacity, I wouldn't want to go tongue weight. Like I would say even like 300 pounds would be like the max tongue weight I'd want to do on this. And you're only going to want to move something if you're in four wheel drive so that your brakes have a, the ability to, to slow things down. Trailer moving ability, big trailers on flat ground or small trailers like chicken coops um, on kind of bumpy or more uneven ground. You've also got these grab hooks here, uh, the USA made grab hooks. They are, the official size is 5 16 This is quarter inch chain, but, um, but it's still working in there. You're talking 1 16th of an inch. So it is still locked in. Where I see using these hooks, for me at least, uh, is gonna be in firewood processing, especially in the near future. I'm not ready to start cutting right now. You'll see this in a future video where I talk more about using this thing. But what I envision here with this is moseying up to the center of a log, hooking into this ring with a chain hook, going around the back of the bucket, and coming back up and chaining that log here so that I can lift that log up and buck it up into 16 inch lengths, 
which I can split and then put in the wood stove. Kind of like a poor man's grapple. Obviously it would be a little bit slower. I would have to feed the chain through. I couldn't just drive into the log and grab it and pick it up with the hydraulics. But this is gonna be, you know, one tenth the price of, of a capable grapple for the front of my BX. And that's not counting your third function hydraulics that you need to have wired up and all that other stuff. Uh, this is literally just an hour of your time to install. Oh shoot, I forgot to turn my phone stopwatch off. So even recording all this and playing around with that trailer and digging the trailer out and finding some tools, about an hour and 41 minutes. Impressions of the JU Fabworks Workmaster plate for the Kubota BX. Um, I'm impressed for $239, I went and looked up the price actually, $239, you get two grab hooks on the front for a 5 16 chain. You get two heavy duty rings here that you can attach stuff to, whether it's the safety tra chains for a trailer or some other item. Um, you get a two inch receiver. You know, you can put a ball on here and move anything within reason for your tractor's loader capability. You definitely wanna, you know, pay attention to that. You know, the powder coat on it looks good. I've already scratched it up a little bit moving that trailer around but I'm not, it, it's a tractor part. I'm not worried about what it looks like, um, you know, from a pretty, pretty tractor part standpoint. Uh, I'm worried about if it works. And this thing works, the welds look good. Everything's made in America, fabricated right in the Midwest. So I'm sold for $239. I don't think that there's a more useful kind of accessory plate, I guess you could call it, that you would mount to the front of your Kubota BX. Big thanks to Jeff over at JU Fabworks for sending this out to me. Um, I don't have an affiliate code with them. I'm not gonna drag Jeff over Coles here for an affiliate code either. For $239, you're supporting a small US made company. Um, there's too many of these things that are made overseas with whatever quality steel, you know, you don't know what you're getting. And um, you know, I wanna support Americans. So for 239 bucks, I'm gonna say, just buy it at that price. If there is an affiliate code or you come across one, cool, enjoy it. But, uh, but really think long and hard before you use that affiliate code because this thing at 239 bucks is worth it all day long. That's gonna be it for today on the channel. If you like what you see and you wanna see more of our farming and homesteading stuff, make sure to hit subscribe down below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching and I hope you're doing well.